Do you see your body as healthy right now? Have you imagined yourself in a bedridden state? This image shows the thickening of the walls of the blood vessels with age. From around 20 years of age, the fat in the blood becomes deposited onto the walls of the arteries, making the walls thicker. By the time a person becomes 40 years of age, the walls of the arteries become even thicker, causing problems with blood flow. At 60 years, the walls of the blood vessels become increasingly thick, as shown in this image, and the walls become fragile. This is called arteriosclerosis. As a result of this, not enough oxygen and nutrients can be supplied, leading to weakening of the cells. The aging process of blood vessels is going on day by day inside our body, and this cannot be avoided. Also, besides natural aging, lifestyle factors, such as an unbalanced diet, not enough exercise, and smoking, accelerate this aging process. As arteriosclerosis progresses, the walls of the blood vessels become thicker. This may cause blood to clot in a narrowed section of blood vessel. Blocking blood flow through the blood vessel, this is called an infarction. When the blood vessel becomes damaged and forms a blood clot inside the blood vessel, this symptom is called a thrombus. Also, there are cases where blood clots form in other parts of the body, or fat may block a narrowed section of a blood vessel. This is called an embolism, and this state prevents blood from reaching the cells beyond the blockage, causing cells to die in a short period of time. There is also another type of arteriosclerosis. Sections of blood vessels that have lost elasticity due to arteriosclerosis swell like a balloon and end up rupturing. This is called a hemorrhage, and this sometimes causes sudden death. Arteriosclerosis in the brain leads to an often fatal event called a stroke. Strokes may involve the blocking of blood vessels in the brain or may involve the rupture of blood vessels and a hemorrhage. This image shows the cross-section of the brain. There are two causes of blood vessels being blocked, cerebral thrombosis and cerebral embolism. These result in a condition otherwise known as softening of the brain, as the brain cells beyond the blockage start to die and degenerate resulting in a liquid texture. This state causes symptoms such as visual impairment, speech impairment, numbness of the limbs, and dizziness. And as the paralysis progresses, symptoms such as aphasia and mental disorders may appear. At this point, it becomes impossible to treat the condition with surgery. Even if the person survives, serious after effects will remain. Cerebral hemorrhage is a condition where the blood vessels in the brain become fragile and rupture, causing it to bleed. As the blood flows out of the blood vessels into the brain tissue, a sudden headache and vomiting will be experienced, followed by loss of consciousness, collapsing, and falling into a coma. The risk of recurrence is high, and the condition is associated with after effects such as motor and sensory paralysis and speech impairments. The danger of cerebral hemorrhage is that it occurs suddenly with almost no symptoms in the early stages. Also, as the person ages and arteriosclerosis progresses in the blood vessels of the brain, a gradual shrinking of the brain takes place. One characteristic symptom of this is memory impairment. In a severe state, 
This causes mental retardation, resulting in a condition called cerebrovascular dementia. Arteriosclerosis of the heart occurs in a blood vessel called the coronary artery, which has the main role of actively and continually supplying oxygen and nutrients to the heart muscles. When a section of the coronary artery becomes around 75% narrower due to arteriosclerosis, angina occurs. This results in a strangling sensation and a sense of pressure. If the condition progresses further to 90% or more blockage, the heart cells beyond the blockage start to gradually die. This causes sudden strangling pain, which lasts for a few hours. This disorder is called a myocardial infarction. Myocardial infarction is a dangerous condition because it occurs suddenly. Also, it causes 30% of the people to die in the first two days after an attack, and mortality is even higher after the second attack. Cancer is the most significant lifestyle disease, being the leading cause of death for Japanese people. Cancer hides in the body for a very long period of time. It takes growth of 30 times for a single cancer cell to grow to a billion cells, which is defined as early detection and equal to around one gram of a small cancer. This process, though it depends on individual cases, may take 10 years or longer. During this time, no symptoms are felt. However, 10 more cell divisions will cause the cancer to grow to around one kilogram, by which time no treatment can be administered. It takes only a few years for this process. This is the reason why cancer is considered to grow extremely rapidly and is considered too late when symptoms have appeared. Every day, 2,000 to 4,000 cancer cells are generated. As we speak now, cancer cells may be generating in your body and growing without being noticed. Then why is that humans do not become ill with cancer so easily? This is because humans are born with mechanisms to fight cancer cells. When cancer cells are generated, white blood cells gather around the cancer cells and start attacking the cancer cells. White blood cells have the important immune function of removing foreign matter inside the body. The weakening of this immune function may trigger symptoms of atopic dermatitis and allergies. However, this defense mechanism also weakens with the aging process. Eventually, the cancer cells defeat the defense mechanism, resulting in cell division and causing harm to the body. There are risk factors other than aging that lower the immune function. These include various diseases, overwork, and stress and these factors promote the occurrence of cancer. Cancer may occur in any part of the body. However, the parts of the body in which cancer occurs are dependent on environmental and racial characteristics, and it is said that dietary habits play a major role in determining this. Japanese people are prone to cancer of the digestive organs, and gastric cancer is one such example. One reason for this is the high content of salt in the Japanese diet. Unlike other cancers, gastric cancer remains without symptoms for a long period of time. During this time, the cancer grows substantially, and it is then too late for treatment. Early detection of cancer is the only way to survive.
At present, the cancer with the highest mortality is lung cancer. Lung cancer also remains almost symptomless as the cancer cells are generated and grow gradually larger. It is difficult to detect even with various diagnostic methods. In addition, when the cancer cells enter the blood collected in the lungs, the cancer spreads throughout the body, resulting in metastasis. The cancer becomes untreatable in such a state. There are many cases of lung cancer where the disease progressed without any symptoms. Lung cancer is a cancer where early detection, or more importantly, prevention, is the only measure that can be applied. Three major lifestyle diseases, cancer, stroke, and heart disease. These are extremely dangerous disorders, which are latently progressing in everyone's bodies. Are we helpless with respect to these lifestyle diseases? The leading cause of death for Japanese people is cancer. It is said that 49% of males and 37% of females become ill with cancer during their lifetimes. For males, one in two people. And for females, one in three people develop cancer. This is the reality for Japanese people. Cancer is said by some to be the national disease of Japan. But what is the situation like for other countries? Here we have the changes in cancer mortality for Japan and the United States. For both males and females, cancer mortality has continually risen in recent years. However, in the United States, there has been a market trend in recent years of cancer mortality reaching its peak. What is different about the measures taken for cancer by Japanese people and people in the United States? It was revealed that in the United States, there is more emphasis on education to prevent cancer than to treat cancer. While medical care in the United States focuses on prevention, medical care in Japan aims for early detection and early treatment. However, it is difficult to lower the cancer mortality rate with this measure alone. Meanwhile, in the United States, the perspective of prevention has been introduced, along with early detection and early treatment. Cancer is extremely difficult to treat once it has appeared. Prevention of cancer before occurrence is the most important factor in lowering the cancer mortality rate. A cancer of around one centimeter in size, only one centimeter, may or may not be detected on CT or MRI. This one centimeter contains one billion cancer cells. When cancer grows to contain one billion cells, it is no longer possible to suppress the growth of cancer cells by the general immune function alone. The body's immune system can suppress only up to one million cancer cells. This shows that at the point of early detection, the cancer has grown to a state where it cannot be treated with the body's immune function alone. For this reason, it is essential to dramatically heighten our immune function in order to treat early detected cancer at an even earlier stage. Instead of panicking after finding the illness, we need to prevent the illness. 
For this purpose, it is essential for us to make efforts to heighten our immune function in our daily lives. Lifestyle diseases that progress inside our bodies without being noticed risk our health by suddenly appearing one day. As the lifestyle disease progress daily, we need to deal with this in our daily lives. However, an important condition for such measures is that the measure applied is safe and does not harm the body in any way.